Good morning. Today we're going to be doing some different ideas with watercolors. We're going to be making this card today and a couple of other ones that I'm going to show you a little bit later. Instead of using watercolor paints, we're going to be using ink cubes. I'm going to be using these two green colors to do the green background. And instead of a single container of water, I like to use an ice cube tray because as you can see, you can dip into the green and a little bit more to clean it off and you still have lots of clean water wells in case you want to switch to a different color. We're going to be using stays on ink to ink our image on porous paper. The best paper to use is Hero Arts watercolor cards. It's a little bit thicker than this paper so it won't curl as much and the surface is made for watercoloring. The first thing I'm going to do is dip into my well of water and add water to the image. Because it's stamped in stays on, it's not going to, to bleed the ink. Then I'm going to dab into the side of my ink cube and add a little bit of color. And you can see how it blends. Because the water has been down first, the, the paint color just bleeds directly into the water and gives it a very soft edge. Now I'm going to put my brush into the green and then switch to another well and you can see how you can get nice clean water. I also use a paper towel that's rolled up that I can just dry my brush a little bit on. Now I'm going to dab into the next color and add a little bit more color. It's such a beautiful day today in California. I have my windows open so you might hear birds and a few people driving by in the street but I thought it's so beautiful out I decided to share that with you. This is the way it'll bleed nice soft edges. If you want a hard edge you don't use the water. If you, you want to use a hard edge you go ahead and put the paint directly onto the paper and it shows a nice hard edge. I like the softer edge because it gives a more blended effect. This is a little bit harder to blend as you can see because there was no water on the paper first. After we've painted our card, we're going to make sure that we trim it so that it adjusts to, this, to the paper card. Stamp the message on, add some flowers, and your card is ready to send. The next thing that we're going to do with watercolors is we're going to use embossing. Embossing adds a lot of depth to this card. I, the first thing I'm going to do is emboss both sides of the card so I can use two pieces and cut it apart and add some water. Now I don't have to run back and forth to get more water because I can use one of these wells over here that is clear. The first thing I'm going to do is add lots of water to this page and then get my ink cue, add some pink. I'm going to start with my lighter colors first and just kind of vary it in different spots. Then I'm going to add some blue washing the brush again and you can see how the the little ink well, or the little ice cube wells contain the different colors and I still have a whole second section of clear to work with I'm going to be adding a little bit of blue and you can see where the blue blends into the pink when I've used two, stamped two to begin with and then I add the watercolor it gives me some extra paper to work with. I always like to make two or three cards at the same time and that way if I'm in a hurry, like I typically am, I have a card all ready to go. This, these are the two that uh, I stamped before and added the color. Now to get these little distinctions in the squares, I simply dab the brush into the ink cube and add it a little bit to each square. Because the paper was still wet, it still blended beautifully. 
this is the card that I've made with the other piece of this card and as you can see it was very easy after I did the water coloring I stamped one message rounded the corners added some flowers and gems and I was ready to go but I trimmed this paper to fit on the card I had a few pieces left so I added the strips that I cut with some more flowers and a message and I got an additional bonus card from this. Now because we're using embossing it gives you a lot of different variations. Here is the beautiful flower vase that was in our catalog. You can see how I watercolored the roses and the vase. Here's another variation on that same image is this is the same image with different colors, a different color vase and different color flowers. Now what I did with this one to attach the acetate is I punched holes with a little bit of ribbon added because if you put the ribbon before you stamp it onto the background then it doesn't show through on your card. It's a nice finished look inside. This is a card that I'm going to give to my mother for Mother's Day and I found a little trick that I want to share with you. A lot of magazines have this strip of perfumed uh, advertisement and if you take this, the strip of perfume cut off just a little bit because it's really strong and tuck it, unfold it, and tuck it underneath your card. It adds a little bit of scent to the card and nobody really knows where it comes from because it's underneath and it does go through the paper. Just be careful when you do that that you don't send it to somebody who's allergic to things like that because it may cause a little bit of a problem for them. Um, I also want to show you how I added these uh, gems. I know gems sometimes are hard. I don't have long fingernails like a lot of people, so I have to depend on some of my tools for that. Um, I cut the gems apart like this, and then with my craft knife, I simply lift it up with the tip. Whoops and I can add it to a card very easily when it's on the tip of the X-Acto knife. I hope you've enjoyed the video today and you've gotten a lot of good ideas. Maybe make some Mother's Day card for your mother and add a little bit of secret scent to the card as well. Have a nice day!